This time, these three Nobel Prize lovers proved Heisenberg wrong. Have you seen the Ant-Man movies of Marvel Universe? Our Ant-Man reached the quantum world at the particle level and defeated all the villains. If you look at it in this context, it is scientifically impossible. Because we have no understanding of the measurements of electrons, but now these Nobel laureates measured the time scale of the electrons, which is after 10 to the power minus 15, i.e., femtosecond, 10 to the power minus 18, attoseconds. And by this analogy of Antman was given, which was impossible, but after this measurement, you can say it is possible, at least for human understanding. And now we can see the time scales of the electrons. And in the future, we can somehow control the whole situations. Who knows? But nevertheless, any human can access the quantum world. It's a far fetched. But now we understand quantum times. For example, look at the hummingbirds. Do you know that any normal camera and even our eyes can see the movements of their wings because it's so fast. The pictures from the cameras make some blurry images. For recording this type of video, we need high FPS video that can capture at least 100 images or frames per second. And I saw that video from a YouTube channel called Slow Mo Guys. And they count the number of the wings movements. And from the high FPS camera, they found this bird moving their wings 48 times in one second. This looks quite impossible, but it's a reality. You can say that these birds are moving their wings in the 10 to the power minus 2 seconds, which means it's much smaller than a scale. The our Nobel Prize winners of electron time scales, which is 10 to the power minus 18 attoseconds, and this time scales, any electron changes its positions. At this level, the electrons move very fast, which was not easily detectable, but very necessary in the context of of our daily life how because we use electron for our electricity and it's necessary so that we can improve semiconductor but before this measurement we only understood a large number of electrons we do not understand every electrons each of electrons move that happen in atomic realm so you can understand these experiments how necessary we have to do first going by your, our classical method of waves and frequency this means that here we can understand by using the frequency of laser light to reduce the time scales by generating higher frequency for example if you emit laser light in this wire and that light form a wave and you can see clearly that how this laser light frequency break down one second into one frequency this is so clear and so simple but what if we are generating per seconds two three five eight fifty thousand waves for example and which mean our reading or measuring thousands of waves in one second or you can say thousands of milliseconds in one second by emitting thousands of laser waves in one second and it looks so simple that how we have to do our experiments and this is an ordinary example whereas in attosecond measurement context we are reading a big number of way more small time scale it would be a billionth billionth fractions of one second or you can say one quadrillionth fraction of a second which seems impossible to reach in 1921 albert einstein was awarded nobel prize for the photoelectric effect when he discovered that that light is not a wave, it's a photon, which is a package of energy. And when it interacts with matter, it releases energy that is vibrating in a femtosecond time scale. Graph. It means these things happening when photon interact with surface, it releases some energy vibrations. And if you calculate in one second meter that ahead, I will explain that how it's measured, then you will find that. It released 10 to the power minus 15 i.e. energy vibration per seconds or a femtoseconds. And you know that this thing was happening in 1921, hundreds of years ago or more. When people were assuming that it is impossible to go further below the femtosecond time scale. Even in 1925, Werner Heisenberg 
one of the greatest scientists of the time, claimed that no one could ever observe the electron time scale. And this statement was too harsh for the future optimistic scientist. But in 2001, scientists measured the first time the electron time scales, which actually thousand times smaller time scale than a femtosecond. And at that speed, the electron in an atom are interacting with the photons and moving rearranging themselves and yeah they are also playing a quantum behavior but to understand creating an electron time scale for aerosecond measurement and combining all the images to create a video of the electron movement before we have to understand how Ahmed Javeli measured the femtosecond time scale by laser technologies in 1980s and received a Nobel Prize in 1999. He was studying chemistry and developed a method to study chemical reaction in details. That method is playing an important role in the discovery of attosecond. So first we have to understand how femtosecond laser measurement techniques works. Well, first we have to emit laser light into the gas chamber neon or argon which interacts with the atom of matter inverse and eject the electron from the atom at maxima of the laser light frequency or you can say that light wave filled kinetic energy in the electron and when the minima of the light waves comes the electron uses that kinetic energy to revolve around the atom and in the process electrons releases an energy vibration at the kinetic energy that vibration is actually a photon. It's all of the events happen in femtosecond, i.e. 10 to the power minus 15. But now in the case of attosecond time scales measurement, first we have to use these kinetic energy vibration pulses or photon energy of the femtosecond time scale, whatever you can say, to emit pulses repeatedly it is called high harmonic pulses and by making these types of repeated pulses specifically you can tune all of the pulses and these combined frequencies are making thousand times more frequency with the combinations and that is actually at a second time scale means repeating femtosecond pulses can show at a second time scale where we tune all of them by the way this is not a full story this is just a basic idea or the context of what we have to do but before this i want to share you first please subscribe i'm a student i don't have financial stability i want to do better work for the benefit of humankind but that's why i'm saying please support me okay back to the topic so what happened there we are using this time a different kinds of technology to create this arrow second time scale measurement this is called pump probe laser measurement technique so what is it in the arrow second measurement we are using laser emitter and an image capturer in x-rays yeah which is actually a probe which is not doing that much it's just trying to emit that vibration and tune in all the vibration which means we are trying to take a snapshot Shot. Here you see in this animations and after making lots of snapshots, you can say recording a lot of vibrations. Just consider that way. Okay, when scientists combine all the measured images and tune all the vibrations of electrons, then we get the video of electron time scale movements or attosecond time scale. Which means each frame here is showing the dynamics of electron movements which is the great discovery in quantum mechanics but this was the old news of 2001 which is actually awarded this year 2023 but the big news from 2020 scientists reached 100 attoseconds 10 to the power minus 20 two more zeros mind boggling you can say this is a new record but from the benefits points of views we can understand how two atoms combine with each other to form a chemical bonds and they are reacting with each other and how they are changing their structure and their property the ionization period which is a field that causes the formation of molecules ranging from atoms to world which is responsible for what we are seeing today and by understanding these things we can make our future a little bit flexible by creating a new form of matter new types of conditions like 
nuclear fusion superconductor these measurements also help us in the measurements problem like a wave particle confusion by imaging at that level of electrons you can say our future will be transparent and by this we can broaden our understanding about astronomy like in star galaxies and exoplanets where we can do measurements of them as a physical on a chemical prescriptions in the next level of resolutions well this is the complete understanding of the arrow seconds guys please try to share your thoughts on my research in comment below do like my video and subscribe my channel thank you bye bye